Welcome back to Alt Majority. We're so happy to have you here with us today. I'm Shay. And I'm Shannon. Thanks for stopping in and uh, coming to our channel. Um, on our beautiful channel, we talk about the law of attraction. We talk about spirituality, spiritual awakening, how to live a beautiful, joyful, powerful life. Yes. And today our topic is the next chakra in the session, in the series, which is the solar plexus. So that is what we're going to be diving into today is all about this eternal fire inside of us. Yeah, so we've had um, a couple other um, episodes on the chakras, so feel free to go check those out. Um, we talked about the root, we talked about the sacral, and now we're sitting here in the middle of our energy center. We've gotten to our solar plexus, and really, um, I'm really excited to talk about this. This is honestly the key to our power, the key to our joy, the key to our ability to live our life at its fullest. So we're really going to go into what this looks like. Um, if you're having some blockages in your in your um, solar plexus, what it feels like and how to move that energy, how to get that moving and how to heal that, and how to really, again, come back into your power. Yeah, so your solar plexus is located um, from the top of your navel to about the bottom of your sternum. So this is like a big area um, that it's covering. And this is all about your power and your will and your confidence right this is such an important center that the element that corresponds with it is fire right so you can think of this upward moving energy whereas the the other two lower chakras are kind of downward energy so this is where all of your transformation resides and comes from is it all begins in your solar plexus could you remind us how the chakra system works together shay and how the energy is meant to kind of move up and down it yeah, so you can think of the lower chakras, your root chakra kind of being this earth energy, right? So this is where you are drawing up from the earth energies. And your um, crown chakra is this ethereal, this is coming from spirit, right? From universal energy. And so all of them sit in this line all together. And when they are aligned, this is when you have this clear channel, right? And they are there to protect you. So if one chakra is blocked, it's because of some type of coping mechanism that you're using to protect yourself, right? But it's, it's the ability to move through that so that you can open up all these channels so that you can be a clear channel for divine energy to flow so that you can have all your manifestations and so that you can call in all the things you want and be able to hold it because there's a difference, right? We have all been, we've all had a manifestation come to us and then it's like, it goes haywire. We're like, yay, we finally got it. And then it's like, oh, what happened there? And that just may be because your your center, your your energy channel, right? That's what your chakras are, is this energy channel isn't able to hold it for one reason or another. Um, and this would yeah. probably indicate some type of blockage in one of those in one of those chakras that isn't allowing for things to flow um in a in a really in ease, right? Yeah. Like a, almost like a leakage you could have yes. where you're not able to hold on to your own power and yes. it just leaks out into different parts of your life, into different parts of your existence. And you're not able to hold on to the things that you try to bring into your life. Yeah. Because it's just not powerful enough. Right. So um, when we have those um, blockages or leakages of our power, let's talk a little bit about what does that look like in our life? What does that feel like? to not have a well-functioning energy center? Right. What kind of things happen? What are we seeing? Well, at times, if there's two things. You can be underactive, you can be overactive, you can be balanced, right? So maybe an overactive right. solar plexus looks like somebody who's like, must be the one in control. It's clinging for control, yes. trying to control everything, like has to be the one who is in charge, yes. right? Well, if you're underactive, you might be shying away from control. You don't want leadership. Um, you don't want to be the one that's in charge of making decisions and whatnot. So that is kind of the difference between an overactive and an underactive, especially when we're talking about the solar plexus here. Yeah, I mean, we could have somebody who's got an overactive that's really got the ego, that's really got like a superiority as in like, I'm, I'm gonna compare myself to everybody, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that so I can feel powerful. 
but and truly it's not, it's not true power. It's just a, I'm going to build myself up to be better to protect my solar plexus. Right. And that's where I'll put people down or I'll um, basically make moves of power where I'll try to exert power over somebody else. Like you were saying control just to protect myself. Um, or on the other hand, maybe it's an inferior inferiority thing. Mm -hmm. So many things trace back to our self-worth, but this is like a confidence issue. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Where some of the um, lower self-worth issues we've talked about that sit down in the root and the sacral are true, like beings, right? Like our, our worthiness as a being sometimes in this energy center, it's more like the expression. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like the confidence, the expression of our energy. It's like, as if this is the sun, you know, and how much do we let our light shine? How much of ourself, our true authenticity sits here in our energy center too, so how capable, how confident do we allow ourselves to be? So this is the lack of confidence. This is where at some point in your upbringing or somewhere when you were growing up, um, you were given the message that you were not powerful. You could have received um, messages like that made you feel humiliated, for example. Perhaps that was the parenting technique used upon you, which possibly would have been something passed down I don't mean to judge your parent or anything. It's not that. It's just if somebody used that method of control over you as a child, humiliation, it ends up making you feel shame. And shame is really the, um, the downfall of the energy center. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't have power when you were younger, if you were in positions where you just felt like you couldn't make your own decisions all decisions were made for you. This could have damaged your ability to do so as an adult. And so hence it will express as either an overexpression, as we've already explained, where I'm just going to do everything possible to control my environment and to control everyone around me so that I can have power, or I'm going to just, I'm never going to develop it. I'm never going to be able to have my own. I'm going to seek out relationships and situations to, um, control empower me because that's kind of my comfort zone mm -hmm. to have somebody else take control and not allow but I'm still sitting in a place of powerlessness in both expressions yes do you know what I'm seeing in both I might seem to be expressing more powerful in the controlling one but it's truly a position of no power that's what what it goes back to because when you have personal power and you have that confidence with that inside of yourself you don't actually need to control a situation or anyone else because you just have it with you know that that ability to just sit calmly within yourself yes so you're not you're not looking to make these powerful expressions yeah and and when we think about the element of fire that rules this region of our bodies when you're um overactive right your fire is going to burn it, it's going to burn everything right your fire is too yeah. too high too big it's going to burn right. everything and when it's too low well, then it's going to sizzle and burn out. And either way there, you're, you're looking at burnout, right? You're either going to burn up yeah. with your fire or you're going to be so low, it's not going to be there. And I like what you said about this is kind of like an outward appearance because imagine you're going to a campfire, right? And you're going to notice that the fire is burning really, really hot, really big, or you're going to notice that there's no fire at all, you know? So it is like, just the element of fire is such a beautiful analogy for this area. Just for that, you notice fire, you notice fire, whether it's there or whether you it's not. It. You, you notice it. And this will also express in your, your motivation or lack thereof, mm -hmm. your ability to follow through on things, your ability to have the fire of creation actually become something. If you have a lot of fire and fuel with on inside of you, I mean, we know the people that are super driven. Yeah. Think about that. People yeah. that are so persistent, they're just driven. Where do they get that energy? Where do they get that inward fire? It's sitting right there in the solar plexus. Yeah. So if I've been given messages or I've had experiences that took my power from me, I'm just going to have a harder time um, getting to those, um, those, those um, expressions of, you know, motivation. Yeah. I'm going to have a harder time getting, because I'm not going to believe in myself as much. 
Yep. I'm not going to think that I can do it. Where unlike someone who's got a real healthy energy center, doesn't necessarily question if they can do it. It's how they can do it. They're like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? And if they don't let the fear stop them. And fear is another thing that really blocks the, the um, central energy system. If I'm afraid of something, and again, what, what is it that I'm afraid of? I'm afraid of failure. I'm afraid of losing our competitive energy is right in here, mm -hmm. right? So if we have a fear of losing, sometimes we won't even do it. Right. We won't do it because we don't want to lose. It's like how I don't like to play kickball because I'm slow <laughs> and I don't like to run. So I'm like, um, I just feel like it's going to come out how slow I am if I have to like <laughs> run around bases or just like avoid or whatever. It's yeah. that. It's just, um, it's avoiding situations where you think you can't make it, where you think you can't be successful. It's fear of success. Yeah. Also. Yeah. And this is where we need to overcome that inertia. I mean, we have all at the same time have had things where it's like, had such a great idea and it's like, this is it. I'm going to do this. And then it doesn't go anywhere. That's because like you're, you're a fire. You need to get it. The hardest part is getting it going. And as soon as you have that fire stoked, all you have to do is feed it. You know, opposed mm -hmm. to if it's completely out, yes, we got to start somewhere and, and take things slow and be gentle with yourself, all the things, but yeah. it's like overcoming this inertia so that you can have this forward, this upward energy. Yeah. I mean, and we really have to start by recognizing where in our life we're losing power. Mm -hmm. Where are we giving power away? Who are we giving power to? Mm -hmm. Who are we letting make decisions for us? If we look around our life and we say, if only I didn't have this person, this situation, this experience going on, this limitation, I would be doing this thing. Right. Um, but, but please break those down. Some of those might be real. Some of those aren't. Yeah. You know, some of those are definitely not real. And some of those are where we let other people decide things for us because we don't want to lose them out of our life, perhaps, or we don't want to, you know, we don't want to lose their friendship or something. So um, we'll do or not do something based on those things, right? Or we'll, we'll say, um, I'm not going to do this thing because it's going to upset society or it's going to upset my family or um, any time that we deny ourselves something that we want or love or have passion or joy for on behalf of someone else or something else, we're blocking this energy. Yeah. Um, everything in your life is for you. Yeah. Everything is for you. So don't let somebody else or some situation that isn't real stop you from being who you really want to be or stop you from doing what you really want to do. So you got to ask yourself, look around your life and figure out what is that? Don't be afraid to do it. It's and, and, essential. Yeah. And you're the creator of your life. So when I find myself in those situations where I, I, I notice that I'm leaking power, it's like you get to decide whether or not that's going to put your fire out or if that's going to actually feed your fire because everything is for you. Everything is for me. And so learn the lesson that was meant to be learned and allow it to stoke the fire instead of put it out. One of the things that I love to do and we should all be doing this every single day is just to reclaim our power back from any person, place, or thing that you gave out today, right? Yeah. So just reclaiming your power back daily, daily. And it doesn't have to be something that is so harsh, right? Like I, I am taking back my power from my partner. I'm taking back my, no, it, it's just that like you deserve to um, hold all of your power to yourself. And that, yes, it's a beautiful thing to be able to share your power with others. That is beautiful. But also call that back into yourself every single day and watch your fire just be fed by your own, by your own practices. Yeah. Speaking of that, <clears throat> how we treat our physical body comes into play here, because yeah. as we know, we have like emotional energy we're dealing with. But our physical body is like a big part of this. Yeah. How strong is your core? How strong is your physical body? How strong is your center? And what kind of things can throw us off of that? What does that look like on our physical body when we start to see problems in the solar plexus area? Well, you can see this is where people carry weight, right? To protect themselves. Some people will carry weight there just to take up space in a way that is 
um, clinging for that control just so that they're taking up more physical space, maybe based on something that's happened to them in this life, something that possibly happened to them in a past life. We also see this is where people will like be sunken in. We, we, we've all seen those people who are just like extremely skinny, you know, kind of sunken in. Mm -hmm. And this is maybe somebody who has an understoked fire. Okay. And so you can think of somebody who maybe has a pot belly, right? This is where our digestion lies too, right? So yeah, right, like, right. this is somebody, I just think of somebody who eats food super fast, right? And isn't digesting it. But it's not just your food that's digesting. It's all the things that you're putting in your body is digesting. So this is where um, the physical state of what your belly is, which I let me just backtrack and say there's so many different body types. Don't be like, yes, yes. don't don't feel targeted or threatened by this in, in any way. You're perfect the way you are. You really Absolutely. are. But this is just... Um, an invitation to, to do some self inquiry on, on how you physically feel, right? There's a difference between this is my body type and I feel good. And this is what my body is doing to protect myself in some, some way. So just like do some self inquiry there and just notice how you actually feel and just inspect your physical body, right? It's like, if you can't hold up your own body weight in, in plank, well, then you might have some some power issues there just based on you don't have strength enough to even hold your own power, your own body weight. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely not saying that you gotta have a six pack here oh, yeah. to, have, to have personal power here. When I say the strength of your core, it's all those things you mentioned, but also it's almost like um, the strength of your will sits here. Yeah. Yes. So how, how committed can you be to things? Do you start something and follow through all the way? It's that it's the core of you. What can be super solid or what can be really weak within you, you know what that looks like. So that's part of why we, when we talk about building up the core, we'll do physical exercises for the core, for the physical body. Yep. We'll do sit-ups, we'll do boat pose, we'll do um, breathing exercises to build that up because we want to stoke that fire. We want to be able to, because we know everything is energy and we are energy. So we want to be able to feed that part of ourself, yep. um, the fire, the strength to be able to have more willpower. And, and I think anybody knows that when you've started something, if you've had a goal, you're going to do it and you followed through and you have done it and you have gotten it, however big or small, that does feed your energy. It does. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. This is, it all comes down to really just what you believe you're worth. This is a lot of, it has a lot to do with just worthiness and do I deserve to hold the power or not? And yeah. the answer is you do. And that's why, especially when we talk about the physical practice of you know, like sit-ups, plank, boat pose, all these things that strengthen your core. Um, well, a strong body equals a strong mind and everything is yeah. interconnected. So don't, don't push that off to the side and be like, you know, that's not my thing. No, it's everybody's thing. And just because you can't do something now doesn't mean you can't do it later. You can begin stoking that fire now, rebuilding the fire now. Yeah, it's the the yoga and the exercise and the um, the training I do isn't to make my physical body look good. It's to feel good. Yeah. It's the strength it gives me. It's the power that I feel after I'm able to do it. And I'm like, wow, I didn't I didn't think I could do any of that, but I can. So wow, look at just the personal power that gives me. It's yeah. it's that. So don't skip building up your core. Yeah, this is, it's essential. It's essential, you know, and so the core is also identified with the color yellow, yeah. right? Because this is our, um, the, the solar plexus, of course, the color yellow. Um, so feel free to wear yellow, mm -hmm. literally put yourself in the vibration of it. Do you know what I mean? You can go into a meditation where you literally picture yourself sitting under the sun, go actually sit under the sun, <laughs> soak mm -hmm. up the sunlight, like, do the things that actually will like build that power up 
Yeah. You know, if you, if you're into crystals, um, if crystals help you get to the vibration, we've talked before about how crystals are just out of vibration and they just, they just bring us up to it. Just look for the yellows. Of course, we're, we're sporting our citrine today. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Our beautiful citrine. Um, I, I have like a citrine, um, sphere here that I really love and Shay, you've got that beautiful Amber Buddha so beautiful that amber color it's that's the color that we're really looking for so also tiger eye is yeah. another one mm-hmm. to help us like just feel free to put that on your body and just again like call the light into yourself call mm-hmm. it into yourself you are a divine being of light you can call light to you if you would like so just picture light streaming into your body just picture um yourself with golden light within the center of you Mm -hmm. and even just grow that golden light just within your mind just picture it growing and glowing more and more Uh, one thing I like to do is I like to grow my energy body up super tall to where I'm like 200 feet tall and I just try to grow it up and I just like stomp around Connecticut giant 200 foot woman (laughs) Um, because it just feels so good to have that much energy inside of us so we can do that within our mind to go into the state of meditation and you can go anywhere, honestly. Yeah. So if you can see it in your mind's eye, if you can imagine it, you can have it. It's yours. You have that ability to touch that energy and bring that frequency back into your reality. It's quite beautiful, quite amazing. Yes, definitely. And there's also some breathing techniques we can do to build that strength up. Shay, talk to us about that. Yeah, my favorite, favorite, and the easiest way to really get your fire going there with breath is breath of fire, which I will demonstrate for you. And if you have the ability to um, come along with me for a moment, please do. If not, you can come back to this slash. Just remember what I say. and You can try this on your own. But it's basically you're going to be exhaling, actively exhaling through your nose and bringing your belly button in. So you're going to... Like Nadia, <laughs> Were you just pushing out? Yeah, you're just pushing all the air out of your body and, and bringing your awareness to your belly. It's really a belly button to spine every time you exhale through the nose. And you aren't, you're, you're passively inhaling through the nose at the same time, but it's an active exhale. And you're just going to continue that at whatever pace feels good for you. And you can build yourself up, right? You can go faster. You can go slower. It might depend on the day and how you're actually, how your body's feeling, like what you need. Um, And you can do this for minutes at a time. You can do this for seconds at a time, whatever, wherever you're at, just honor that. Um, But this is such a beautiful way to really, you will feel, you begin to stoke that fire in your belly just by your breath, just with your breath. Just with your breath. Um, Also like, like a flutter breath where Mm -hmm. you're just kind of like breathing in and out real short, quick. (laughs) like really super quick like that is also another way to like build that up and it seems easy to do but like as you get into it it's kind of it takes practice it takes practice to build up that ability to be able to do that and you think about like you have a fire right that you can like fan and like the fire is being stoked just by it's it's you doing that with your own breath you are the fan when you're doing these breathing exercises (laughs) right yeah exactly so um just it again, everything, because everything is energy, anything we can do to like build that up. Also, I mean, just, again, we talk about authenticity and being yourself and that just being a part of your power. So because joy is really tied into the solar plexus too, do things of joy, do things of laughter, like laughter is a place that actually physically happens in your, in the center of your body. So Laughter is another really good way to like build up your core, build up your energy. Yeah, absolutely. This is our space of transformation. So if you're somebody who's like looking for a transformation, start by doing this work on your own power. What we said earlier, notice where your energy may be leaking. Notice um, people yes. may be, this happens too, right? That we have people in our life who maybe like be siphoning our energy and not yes. without us even realizing So just take a really, just take an inventory of where your energy goes throughout the day. Yeah. Right. And really, 
really get comfortable with that list. And if it's, if it feels good, keep it. If it doesn't feel good, get rid of it. Everything is for you. You're the creator of your life. You get to decide where your energy is going to go. For sure. I mean, you've heard the term any energy vampire, right? Yeah. And it's that, it's that person that you literally feel drained. It's that person who takes up a lot of your mental energy worrying about or thinking about what are they doing? What are they thinking? It's that it's the person when you get in their presence, you just feel the energy go to them. They're the, they're the one that gets all the conversation. They're the one that's important in the room. They're the one that you have to be concerned about their comfort level. That's, that's an energy vampire. (laughs) That's the one that where you're giving up what you want or need to accommodate them because you don't want to upset them because you don't want to disrupt them, whatever it is because you don't want to lose them perhaps even. So you give your power, you're giving your power. You're just giving it away. You're giving it away. When you get involved with somebody who's an energy vampire, the only way to really stop that is to just step back and stop giving that energy up. And we recognize this isn't easily done necessarily. So sometimes you just have to take it in increments and not give up as much. And I'm going to give up less. I'm going to give up less. I'm going to give up less until I'm not giving it up anymore if you can't just outright walk away from somebody, right. and this could be a family member. I mean, who knows, right? Like mm-hmm. the whole point being is to just pay attention to the energy vampires. Just know where your energy is going. Pay attention to where your energy is going out into the world, period. And this is where boundaries come in. And it's so, so yes. that boundaries with people because it is literally a container for your energy right? Boundaries literally will be, can bound, bind your energy so that you're not, it's not leaking and, or yes. calling it back in if it is leaking. So do not be afraid. If somebody's meant to be in your life, they will be in your life, regardless if you set a boundary with them or not. And you just have to, yeah. this is where trust and surrender comes in. I know it can be scary right. to set boundaries with people, especially if you've already had a type of relationship where boundaries weren't set right? But every moment is a time to start anew. Every moment is a time to start stoking that fire. So set the boundary and people will either vibrate and stay with you or they're going to vibrate their way out. And that's for you too. Yeah. And so when you think about what type of boundary do you have, do you have a real rigid boundary where you don't let people in? Is that your problem where you're not allowing people in? You're not allowing people to help you. Are you refusing help all the time? Do you want to do it yourself? Are you that person? If so, if you have real rigid boundaries, maybe this is where you got to look at loosening up a little bit and, 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 um, don't be so self-protective because when you're really, really closed off, then it's hard for power to get in also, but yeah. you're just trying to hold on to your power. Okay. So that's definitely, or do you have super fluid boundaries where you're the person where every single one of your friends knows all your problems. They know all your medical, entire medical history. They know your entire child story. Are you telling strangers things that you just meet? Do all your coworkers know about all your personal problems? Do you have a problem um, holding in your power and your, your information and your energy into yourself? Or are you putting it out all over the place? And if that's the case where you have real fluid boundaries, then consider closing those boundaries up and understanding as you're giving your power away, you're not necessarily receiving back and you can't really expect to receive back from other people what you're seeking. You're seeking power. That's what it is. You're seeking validation. Yeah. Yeah. You want someone to validate and understand you, but really put that safety boundary around yourself a little bit and build yourself up inside because you're just leaking your power out. And sometimes people use that stuff against you. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes you have unethical people who, because they know that you're so open, will violate your boundaries. Of course, it's not your fault. I'm just saying that an open boundary is just a different, different type of energy kind of situation that you have to correct. You want to correct. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to talk for a second about, we've all been around people who like give us energy too, right? Give us yes. that recharges. Yes. These are people who are, yeah, we want them in our life, right? Because 
if somebody is giving you energy in a good way or giving you power, recharging your power, um, this, this suggests to me that they are self-contained and that I am self-contained. And then together, I know that like when you and I are together, our power, my power skyrockets yeah. up a million, right? So this is- I really say that. It's like, it's like, doesn't double. It just like exponentially like explodes. Yeah. That's right. And it's like, if you think of your solar plexus as being the sun, right? If the sun is like this macrocosmic version of the solar plexus, right? When our suns get together, like we, we shine so much brighter. So I don't yeah. need to suggest that you can't um, like power up with people, but it's just yeah. when we're like giving your power and it's like, you aren't receiving anything. There has to be this like, cohesive energy exchange for it to really be beneficial for you right we, we've all had the people yes. where it's like we're giving we're giving we're giving or vice versa people who give 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 to us right and it's like what you're looking for is that balance of energy between between the things in your life that you are um exchanging power with yeah that equal energy exchange mm -hmm. just makes you feel that much more balanced that much more we do when we have that unequal exchange going on where we're taking, 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 it's because it's leaking out somewhere else probably. Right. Yeah. Or if we're just giving, 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 we're depleting ourselves. Yeah. So, and we may be doing those things because we want to be liked or loved and we want, you know, we're, we don't have bad intent. It's not bad. It's just, maybe we weren't um, programmed to be able to know how to do this. None of us were yeah. None of us were, we all, we've had to figure these things out. So um, take time with yourself and pay attention to what does all that look like. And then just start to do the things that we were talking about, start, start to correct it, start to build your strength up, your inner strength, yeah. start to make small choices of power and um, do the things that start to make you really feel good. Even the small things are going to really start to get you on that path of momentum. Yes, like I said earlier, the hardest part is beginning. And after that, you're once you begin and you start stoking the fire, all you have to do is feed it then. And it's like, yeah. you, you have to feed, just like you have to feed yourself, right? These are all analogies for stoking the fire, right? Everything, when you feed yourself, when you drink water, all these things, it is all going to your energy center. So yeah, just begin now, start now. Yeah, because you are a divine being, you have the power, you have the ability. Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. Mm -hmm. Don't let anyone tell you that you don't have the power. And if you're in a position where you don't feel like you have the power to live your own life or make your own choices, this is your opportunity to start doing something different. Yeah. Dear one, this is your opportunity to start making different choices and reclaiming that power back. And it's not always easy, but sometimes it's the mm. hard things that like really propel us forward. So just, always, yes, always, always. We don't learn from winning. <laughs> right? exactly. We don't learn from the easy stuff. The stuff that comes easy to us is not what we're learning from. Yeah. We're picking the hard stuff. We pick this harder situations. So the things that are taking your power, you've probably set up some situation in your life and and again, let's separate from blame and let that the decisions people make be their decisions. But my, by that mean, I mean, you call in power situations, power dynamics to show yourself something, to teach yourself something, to have the opportunity for your soul to grow. Yeah. So again, sometimes your greatest teachers definitely feel like the ones that are hurting you and persecuting you. And yeah, yeah. But those lessons of power are ours to learn. So that's the key is to actually learn the lesson. Yeah. Take that lesson in about the power and learn how to build your power up. Learn how to heal that and don't skip over this, this step of awakening. It's crucial that you have a strong energy center if you're really going to spiritually awaken. If you're really going to try to manifest things, we always talk about the law of attraction and manifestations. Your manifestations are right here in your energy center. Yeah. So you're not going to manifest and you're going to block your manifestations actually, if you don't have a healthy, strong center. Yeah. Yep. So you got this. Everything is for you. Let's stoke our fires together. This is why we've created this community together, right? Is because we want to 
have like-minded people who are all in this together to be to to align themselves and to open themselves up to all of their manifestations and to be this these conscious creators of our lives so here we are you know if you're looking for people like us it's like here we are you found us we're here and let's just grow continue to grow together yeah thanks so much for joining us today we really appreciate your attention we appreciate your energy um we've said before before. we're doing this for us we're doing this for each other but we're also mm -hmm. doing this for you because we're all part of the collective so as one of us uh levels up we all level up yeah. as one of us like raises our frequency a little bit it all raises up so thank you for being part of our journey um, please please give us a like please subscribe if you haven't already and you can find us over on um you can find us on youtube you can find us on itunes you can find us on spotify um Check us out on Instagram. We're really, really grateful for every single interaction that we um, have with you. Thank you so much for the comments, um, for the messages that we've already received so far. It actually means so much to us to hear from you and to know that our conversations are hel helping you or benefiting you in any way. It just fuels our fire. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you so much for that. You are a powerful divine being and we will see you next Monday. Thanks for coming.